So here we have the lateral view of the brain and uh, Dr. Jutani uh, showed an image similar to this earlier. So we have our primary motor cortex and our primary sensory cortex for central lobule for orientation. We have our Wernicke's area in green between that parietal temporal occipital junction and Broca's area for speech production in the left inferior frontal lobule region up in here. And if you want to hear speech, hearing me talk, for instance, the information is coming through these auditory cortex, working its way back to this Wernicke's area, which is more of a conceptual space than any, anything physically real. And then this information goes along the arcuate fasciculus to Broca's area. And if I wanted to repeat what is being said, Broca's area can send this information to motor cortex. Motor cortex then sends it to all the hundred or so muscles involved with speech production so that I can then convey words and phrases to you. Now, if I am reading words, the information goes through visual cortex, also works this way to Wernicke's area so I can read information. And if I can read Braille, tactile information, you can take Braille and that also works this way through Wernicke's area for language reception. And then Broca's for the production. And as mentioned in most right-handers, 95 to 98% of the time, these Broca's and Wernicke's is gonna be on the left hemisphere, occasionally flips over. And for left-handers out there, uh, it's usually about 75% show strong left lateralization and then different percentages, it can be either completely flipped to the other hemisphere or more bilaterally represented. And that's when you wanna have fMRI and other tasks uh, to try to map that out more specifically for, for your patient. Here's an image showing the arcuate fasciculus in the left hemisphere. This is most strongly developed in us uh, humans relative to apes and to monkeys. And here is a lesion, for instance, back in Wernicke's. Here we can see our there's our thumb from the temporal lobe. Here's our sylvian fissure and our middle temporal gyrus, uh, superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and so forth, refreshing our anatomy. Here we had a, uh, from Dr. Broca back in the 1800s, a patient who had Broca's area uh, damaged and in that inferior frontal lobule. And here are areas that are involved with language production in another uh, individual. You can see mostly in that left inferior frontal gyrus region, but you also have with language production, some areas of the brain light up with a functional image such as this. So it's more complicated than just these areas, but thinking about Broca's and Wernicke's is a good starting point for thinking about language systems. With aphasias, you wipe out back in this temporal parietal occipital junction, it's gonna be affiliated with the Wernicke's aphasia, again, up inferior frontal lobule Broca's, if you cut between the two, supramarginal gyrus and that fascicular arcuate fasciculus, you can have what's called a conduction aphasia. So what you're hearing doesn't get conveyed over to what you're speaking. And then all of this will be a global aphasia. Here in the lower left is a high yield aphasia square. Make sure you guys memorize that. And basically if you have good comprehension or poor comprehension, fluent speech or non-fluent speech are the major two by two. And then whether you can repeat or not is gonna be important. So if you can say arcuate fasciculus, and then Divine says arcuate fasciculus, then I will know that he had good comprehension and good uh, fluency and the information could go from the posterior sensory side of things to the motor uh, anterior motor side of things. And so these are the four basic elements for classifying the different forms of aphasia or inability to use language. And that tends to be uh, lateralized to the left hemisphere, but not always. Here's a cool syndrome to help think about this. <clears throat> uh, Alexia without agraphia. So if you have a lesion to the posterior cerebral artery, taking out, say, the left PCA, if you are um, the information, that vi visual cortex, so if you were to write down your name, so if your name was Divine Nafar, you write down D-I-V-I-N-E, great. And now if you wanted to read that, you would have visual cortex back in here and here would see the words and send the information to Wernicke's area to see what you're reading. But with this particular stroke, the visual input with the PCA lesion here, there's no uh, visual processing. So this area of the brain is not talking to Wernicke's area. And if you took out the splenium of the corpus callosum, the right hemisphere cannot, it can read, but it can't send the information to Wernicke's area. So with this person with this lesion, they could write down their name, but if you ask them to read what they wrote, they wouldn't be, would not be able to read it. What? Alexia without agraphia. 
So syndromes like these, this is called the disconnection syndrome, also give us some clues about the nature of how the, the human mind works. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.